Kristen of the Oosterhout Free Library. It's October, so you might be thinking of pumpkins or costumes and candy, but did you know you can also think of pizza because October is National Pizza Month. That's right. Do you like pizza? Lots of people do. Right now, somewhere in the world, someone is eating it. Did you know that in the United States, we eat 350 slices of pizza every second? That's a lot of pizza. Do you have a favorite pizza topping? Is it cheese, maybe pepperoni, or even pineapple? Did you know that in Sweden, they serve pizza with bananas and peanuts? All over the world, people love pizza. But where did it come from and who made the first pizza? You'll find out today as I share Greg Pizzoli's book, Pizza, A Slice of History. And you can make your own easy, delicious mini pizza. So let's learn a bit more about this tasty treat. Pizza, A Slice of History, written and illustrated by Greg Pizzoli, and published by Viking Books for Young Readers. This is a pizza. And this is a pizza. French bread pizza. And so is this. Mini bagel pizza. And yes, even this is pizza. Pizza with pineapple. This is a pizzeria. That's a place that sells pizza. This is a pizziallo. That's a person who makes pizza. Yay! This is a pizza rat. That's a rat who likes pizza. Who doesn't? In the United States of America, we eat 350 slices of pizza every second. How many have you eaten? How many in my whole life? We're gonna need a bigger blackboard. All over the world, people love pizza. But where did it start? When did it happen? Who made the first pizza? How should I know? Some people say it started in ancient Greece. The Greeks would cook a flatbread topped with olives and honey, which they called plankutos. But is that pizza? Um, no. Others say it was the Persians. The soldiers of Darius the Great would cook a shallow crust directly on their shields. Pretty cool, sure, but is that pizza? No, everyone knows you need tomato for pizza. And the tomato comes from Italy. Actually, the tomato does not come from Italy. Tomatoes are thought to be originally from Peru and didn't come to Europe until the 1500s. For centuries, most Europeans thought tomatoes were unhealthy and even poisonous, and many people refused to eat them. Care for a bite? No, thank you. In Naples, Italy, people did cook with tomatoes. They added tomatoes to many Italian recipes, including a dish they called pizza. This is Raffaele Esposito. Ciao! 
He made dough with flour, yeast, water, sugar, olive oil, and salt. He topped the dough with tomatoes and cheese. Then he cooked the pizza in an oven heated with burning wood. Esposito numero uno. Loco Piazziolo makes legendary pies for all. He was famous for making the best pizza in Naples. In 1889, King Umberto and Queen Margarita visited Naples and they heard about the amazing pizzas by Raffaele Esposito. The story goes that Queen Margarita asked Esposito to bring her some pizza. This was the first pizza delivery. Esposito came up with three different pizzas and the queen loved them all. But her favorite was topped with tomatoes, mozzarella, cheese, and basil leaves. The colors look a lot like the Italian flag, don't you think? Esposito named this pizza after the queen, and still today we call it Pizza Margarita. The popularity of pizza soon spread across Italy, and when Italian immigrants moved to the United States, they brought their love of pizza with them. Between 1880 and 1924, four million Italians moved to the United States. Aren't you glad they did? This is Gennaro Lombardi. Many people think that his pizzeria was the first in New York City. This is Lombardi's. It opened in 1905. Have you ever been there? Pizza became even more popular in the United States after World War II. American soldiers returned home from Italy and they brought back a hunger for pizza. Soon, pizzerias had opened all over the United States and each region found a way to make their pizza unique. From New York, New York pizza is considered by many to be the American pie. It's known for large slices, chewy cheese, and a thin, flexible crust. Forget about it. To Chicago, thick, deep dish pizza. To Philadelphia's tomato pie that has no mozzarella cheese. Detroit's rectangular pizza. And California's unique barbecue chicken, goat cheese, and even avocado pizzas. What is pizza like where you live? Today, people make pizza all around the world, and they all make it in their own way. Different cultures make pizzas with unique doughs, sauces, and toppings. In Sweden, they make a pizza topped with curry powder, peanuts, and bananas. In Brazil, it's not uncommon to see green peas on pizza. In Japan, people sometimes top their pizza with mayo haga, a combination of potato, bacon, and mayonnaise. Did you know that Hawaiian pizza is actually from Canada? It's true. It's topped with pineapples and ham. In Russia, they enjoy a pizza topped with four kinds of fish served cold. If you ever visit Costa Rica, you should try a pizza topped with shredded coconut. I'll try any pizza once. Right now, somewhere in the world, someone is enjoying a pizza. Are you? Wow, I never knew there's so much to learn about pizza.
so many different toppings from around the world, and so many different styles in America. Now, we're very lucky to live here in northeastern Pennsylvania because we have so many different styles of pizza to choose from. There's square pizza, brown pizza, old forge pizza, pizza with or without onions, pizza with sweet sauce, so many different kinds. Do you have a favorite? Have you ever made your own pizza? Now, you might think you need a pizza oven to make a pizza, but today I'll show you how you can make your own quick pizza in about 15 minutes. The author has included a simple recipe for us to follow. So let's begin. You'll need an adult helper, some English muffins, one quarter cup of tomato sauce. You can use pizza sauce or marinara sauce, one cup of cheese or other toppings, a toaster oven with a tray or aluminum foil. If you don't have a toaster oven, no problem. You can just use your oven. And of course, you'll need your appetite. Your adult helper can preheat your toaster oven to 375 degrees. Split the English muffins in half so that you have four mini pizza doughs. Place the four English muffin halves on the toaster oven baking sheet, crumbly side up. If you don't have a baking sheet, you can always use aluminum foil. This will keep the crumbs from dripping down into your toaster oven. Next, lightly toast your English muffins in the toaster oven, but just for a minute or two. This is to make them nice and crispy. Then, use a spoon to add a dollop of tomato sauce to each of the muffin halves. Use enough sauce to cover the top of the muffin, but not too much or it'll make your pizza soggy. Next, you can sprinkle cheese over the tomato sauce. You can put just a little bit of cheese like I did, or you can make yours extra cheesy. Or you might even want to leave out the cheese altogether for a mini tomato pie. Then add any other toppings that you wish. But remember, when it comes to toppings, less is usually more. Now, bake the mini pizzas in the toaster oven for 10 minutes or until the cheese is melted. Let the pizza cool for one minute and enjoy. Congratulations, you are now officially a pizzaiolo, a pizza maker. Try out again with different toppings. The, the fun thing about cooking is that by following a recipe, you get to use important math and measuring skills. You can also practice the concept of fractions in a deliciously fun way with pizza. One way is to describe the pizza in fractions by looking at the toppings. Ask yourself, how many slices of pizza have pepperoni on it? And here we see that four out of eight slices have pepperoni. So that's four eighths, or half of the pizza has pepperoni. You can also describe the number of remaining pizza slices in fractions as well. For example, three fourths of the pizza is left to eat. If I eat another slice, two-fourths or half the pizza remains. Who knew that math could be so tasty? If you're inspired to make more pizzas or read a pizza-themed book, you can check out these books available at the library. I hope you had fun. I hope you keep exploring, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Or should I say ciao?